This is After the Gridiron. A podcast featuring interviews with retired football players. If you're a fan of After the Gridiron, make sure you subscribe to the show to ensure that you won't miss an episode. Today's episode is sponsored by Symphonies. Symphonies is an online store that provides custom clothing and accessories. They have a number of quality products available at affordable prices. They offer custom, unique, funny, and inspirational products that you won't find anywhere else. So go to www.symphonies.ca to shop for your next purchase. And as a special offer for our listeners, enter promo code GRIDIRON to get 15% off your purchase. So there's no excuse not to check it out. Again, that's www.symphonies.ca. Symphonies. Great products, great prices. All right, everyone, welcome to the show. I am your host, uh, Lyle Green, and today we have as our guest Greg Jones. So, Greg played seven years uh, professionally. He played uh, in the NFL with the Giants, Jags, and uh, Tennessee, and he also played in the CFL with the Argos and Rough Riders. He was a six-round pick in the 2011 uh, NFL draft by the Giants. He uh, attended uh, Michigan State University, where he had a stellar career and had uh, uh, plenty of accolades, including uh, being um, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year in 20, uh, 2009. He's a first-team All-American in 2009 and 2010, and uh, part of the Michigan State uh, Big Ten Championship team in 2010 as well. Uh, his first year with the Giants, he won the Super Bowl. As a starting uh, middle linebacker, is his rookie year, and also had a special, uh, probably one of the best uh, proposals that a, a guy could ever have uh, that year as well. We'll get into that later. And uh, yeah, now he's the uh, VP of Vane Protective Gear, um, and he's uh, doing great stuff with them as well, helping to uh, you know help with uh, concussion detection and stuff like that. So um, yeah, and their website is uh, Vane Protective Vane. Sorry, Main mouthguards.com is the website and we'll get into all that later on but uh greg thank you for coming on welcome to the show no thanks for having me i appreciate it a lot thank you yeah this could be could be great so yeah i usually like to start off by asking our guests to uh say something about themselves that most people wouldn't know so what's what would you say about yourself that most people wouldn't know about you oh man that most people don't know about me probably um that my one of my first jobs I was a uh, in high school I was a clown and I used to a do <laughs> yeah I used to do balloon animals and uh airbrush painting and oh, no way. yeah just you know make, putting smiles on people's faces that was my first one of my first jobs one of my first jobs um oh, in high that's school pretty cool. So I learned so how to birthday do birthday parties and stuff. Birthday parties, bar mitzvahs, and all that stuff. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you can make all those balloon uh, yeah, animals and creatures and all those type of things. You know, I uh, I was at a carnival and I tried to give it a shot. I'm a little rusty, man, but uh, but I can get. <laughs> I, I'm not too bad. I'm not too not bad. Too bad. Oh, yeah. nice. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm sure the kids would love 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 something like that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's yeah, let's uh, go back to the beginning and talk about how you uh, how you got started in uh, in football. Man, uh, I got started in football really based out of like wanting to just be involved with the community and other kids. You know, I grew up an only child, so I I initially I saw a flyer and um, at, at school and. Uh, people, you know, all these kids are gathered around, you know, the school or around the flyer at the school. And I took the flyer home and my mom told me no immediately. Like, no, Hell you're yeah. too small. Um, you know, you're going to get hurt. You're not big enough. You know, at the time I'm in, I'm in third grade. So, um, okay. you know, every, everybody's small <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, at that point in time. And, uh, and then I took it to my dad later that night because he got off work a little later, and he said, "Greg, you know what? We're going to um, 
we're going to go to play against sports, which is, you know, where you buy refurbished gear at. And, yeah, man, he, we, he put me on the field, stuck me on there. And then I had a good day. And right when I came off the field, my mom was waiting with that look. Like, I told you what not you to. Yeah, yeah, what are you yeah. doing? And uh, and now my mom is like, she still wants me to play. Like, she called me, oh, like, wow, not too long ago and was like, the AF just started in XFL. Like you should do one of them. I'm like, yeah. man, like I'm, <laughs> I'm retired. <laughs> you know, um, I'm very happy with my career. You know, I think had it, those things happened like two years ago, uh, maybe yeah. even a year ago, Possibly. I might still be. Yeah, I might still be playing. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it didn't. Um, you know, it just didn't work out for a reason though. But I'm very, very happy though with. Uh, with everything knows well too. Um the uh and then yeah man, so yeah, I, I that's that's how I got started with football. Okay. And did you play uh, other sports uh, growing up or is it just uh was it just football? Um it was uh I played football, basketball, um I tried baseball, I'm not very good. I wish not I was <laughs> not too yeah. good. Um I can I can hit or I can catch but I can't hit. I'm not very great. <laughs> Uh, my hand die is not, not like I would like it to be when it comes to swinging a bat. Um, well, yeah, even the best players are only hit it you know, three out of ten times. So you're it's right. It's definitely a tough thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it was very tough. And then uh, I ran track in high school to help with my speed. Um, okay. But yeah, other other than that, um, yeah, I was definitely football dominant without a doubt. I would, I would say between football and basketball, those are my two main sports. Yeah. Two main ones. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, your selection of, of Michigan State. I'm I'm guessing you're one of the pretty high uh, uh, prospect coming out of high school. So can you talk about uh, uh, re- the recruiting process for you and, and and how you decided on on going to to Michigan State? Yeah, I uh, I really actually I wasn't very high coming out. I was actually only a two star um, oh, okay. coming out, um, and I. I mean, a lot of people would call me undersized. I mean, a lot of people would thought I could play, um, but didn't think I could have an impact like I did in Michigan State or anywhere else. So um, a lot of people counted me out, you know, in in the sense that I, they never thought I would, I'd be better than what I, I was today, you know, or anything great like, you know, I've been blessed to do in my career. So, you know, it, it, it was tough, you know, you know, when I saw the people that I knew, that was better than getting, you know, scholarships and offers and a lot of publicity that I didn't think was deserved, but you know, Hey, that's, that's the way it goes. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I love, you know, the fact that people did that and it made me work really hard. And, um, and I eventually, when I committed to Michigan state, uh, after decommitting from Minnesota, that's when I got my third star. And so I was never higher than a four star. I never had in three stars, um, oh, wow. okay. um, coming out of high school. So, uh, but you know, you only need one, you know, you, it's whether you have yeah. three stars, one star, whatever, you only can go to one school and play for one team. So, yeah, exactly. um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that, that's all I care about. That one school that wanted me, um, as bad as I wanted them. And, you know, that, you know, you try to look for that it doesn't always happen, you know, initially sometimes, but, for people, but for me, it happened. And, you know, me and Coach B, it was Coach B's birthday yesterday, and we were talking yesterday, too. So, two days ago. So, you know, we still have their relationship, you know. And, oh, nice. um, yeah, and so, you know, picking, you know, going to Michigan State to me was hand in hand because Coach D, you know, he's from Ohio, and, you know, at the time he was coaching in Cincinnati. So, Coach D, uh, he just, Said Greg, I'm taking you and one other guy. His name was Derek Selleck, who you know plays for 49ers, I believe. Still, um, yeah. going to his ninth, going to his ninth year, eighth year, eighth year. And so, uh, yeah, man, it, it, he took me and and Garrick and the rest was history, man. You know, I've loved every moment ever since then. Wow, yeah. So, Coach D is uh, referring to Coach D'Antoni, correct? Correct. Mike D'Antoni. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Coach, yeah, my yeah, Mark, Mark, Mark oh, D'Antoni. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. So what uh, what made you switch from uh, from Minnesota to going to Michigan State? You, you mentioned you did commit to Minnesota at first, and what made you change your mind? Uh, 
initially, well, Glenn Mason was fire, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I I knew that um, me being on the field was somewhat tied to him being there, and when he wasn't there, I didn't like the situation. You know, I um, I don't know if the same deal would have got done and everything like that. So, um, so I decommitted, um, and I've only lost to Minnesota one time, uh, which I don't. Which I don't believe we should have lost that game, but we lost that game. But yeah, um, I only lost to Minnesota one time in my career. So, okay. um, and I've been very happy about everything I've done at Michigan State. But the reason why I left was because Ben Mason uh, was let go, and I knew that Coach D uh, had the right intentions for me um, in my career. Yeah, he definitely made the, the right choice going with uh, Michigan State, and you had a a great career there and, and uh, did amazing things there. So let's, let's talk about your, your time at Michigan State. You're a first team all Big Ten, I think, every year and uh, all American the last couple of years and, and had you know great success with the team. So talk about your time uh, at Michigan State and, 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 and how it was there for you. Yeah, um, my time at State uh, was it was it was fun. It was it was everything, you know, getting, getting to spend that time um with guys that you start to mature you know mature with you know from um freshman year to senior year and you know it's just really cool you know it's really really cool um to to have the experience and you know to leave as seniors and leave as champions as seniors um for those of us that were you know in that class so um it, it meant a lot it, it meant a lot and i think it meant a lot to coach d as well too um, and the success I've had, you know, I've had a lot, I just had a lot of great coaches and great players around me, I'll be honest with you. And, uh, it was not something that is easy, you know, to really put together, you know, it's to get the, you know, all those tackles and all the stuff I've done, you know, that, that came because I had great teammates that did their job. And when it was time for me to do my job, I did, that's what, that's what I did. And then, if I could go above and beyond, I would. But, you know, I also had, like I said before, I had a lot of great teammates, a lot of great coaches that helped me get there. Nice. So, yeah, talk about some of the, the teammates you had at Michigan State. And I'm sure that there's some some great players that you've played wow. with. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's I play with great guys, and it's, it, it, sometimes it's not great, you know, in the sense that, like, some of those guys didn't go to the next level. You know, some of the guys didn't, you know, but they helped me in my career. I didn't have a long stint at the next level, um, but helped me in my career. I mean, and some of the guys, I mean, you talk about Caleb Thornhill, who's my senior captain in my freshman year, who, you know, is now with the Dolphins and their player personnel, yeah. um, who took me underneath his wing and showed me ropes. Travis Key was another same guy, older guy, the same exact thing. Um, I mean, Ashton Henderson, uh, Justin Kershaw, uh, you know, just a lot of guys that, you know, you probably never heard of, but they had a lot of impact on my life. Um, can't, you know, can't go enough without guys like Antonio Jeremiah, uh, Eric Gordon, uh, Brandon Benson, uh, like all these guys that I'm still pretty close with, though, but, uh, you know, didn't, didn't have a long stint in NFL or CFL, but, you know, had a lot of impact on my life. Um, you know, obviously when you go against guys like Kirk Cousins and Le'Veon Bell, that's going to make you better, um, yeah, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> every day. And, and, you know, and Javon Ringer, you know, guys like that. And, um, EJ Cunningham and, you know, all these great Devin Thomas, you know, just great, you know, great ball players, man. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you're like, wow, like, you know, that is something that, uh, you know, I, I reflect on. I'm happy that I had that time with those guys. So, uh, but yeah, all of those guys, and you know, obviously the coaching staff, you know, been there, been together for a long time. It's been exciting. So, yeah, definitely, you have a, a great staff there with uh, Coach D'Antoni and uh, Antonio, and yeah, the the job he's done with that program to 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 take it to where it is is a is a is an amazing thing. That uh, yeah, you guys produce you know, so many uh, great players and and uh, great professionals and. And uh, yeah, that's uh, just an amazing and great program that they, that he's uh, built there at Michigan State for sure. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about your um, uh, draft day and going into the NFL as a you know, uh, Big Ten uh, Defensive Player of the Year and 
And uh, when they were mm-hmm. winning the championship, first team All American, I'm sure um, you probably would expect it to to go higher. So um, I'm not sure what they were saying right. about your draft. Um, at, well, your your draft Me score, neither. but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk about <laughs> yeah, talk about um, no, your draft experience and uh, no, um, how it felt uh, getting drafted. Uh, I'll be honest with you, man. My draft experience was up and down. Um, it was not what I thought it would be, not at all. Yeah. You know, and, but I will say, and me and my wife were actually talking about this. Uh, we just got back from Calgary and we were on you know, our little vacation. Oh, nice. And uh, we were, I was talking about this, and, and all I can think about is I, if I get drafted to the second, second or third round, which I thought I was going, yeah. I think I go to a team that hasn't won a Super Bowl in a long time and and may, maybe not won a Super Bowl for a very long time, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I – for me to go sixth round to the New York Giants in the Super Bowl with that team, with that much experience, I think it was all meant to be. I, I really do. Um, I'm not – you know, a lot of people were concerned about money, you know, and that's cool, and I'm not saying that, you know, for what, uh, for what we did, you know, I mean – I believe, you know, I should get, you know, for four, 465 tackles and not including any other and all other hits, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you deserve to get paid for that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, definitely. You know what I'm saying? You deserve that. Those are, you know, the, you deserve to get paid for that stuff, you know, um, because every time you go out there, you risk your life, you know, and you don't know what's going to happen after and you know, what you leave behind for family or anything like that, loved ones. So. Yeah. Um, anytime you risk your life out there, you you know, especially in the professional realm, uh, you deserve to get paid for that. Definitely, so, yeah. um, but but anyhow, uh, yeah, man, the the draft was not exactly how I thought it was going to be, um, but I will tell you, man, it, it it changed me. And just to hear your name called, and um, I could complain about not going where I wanted to go, but I can also talk to guys who never got that call yeah. um, and who never made it in. And and I, I guarantee you they would have given anything to get that call. So yeah. um, I'm very happy and I'm very blessed for what it turned out to be. Uh, but initially I will say I was disappointed, but, um, you know, it, it's not about, you know, what, you know, the, 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 the cards that you have is, you know, I mean, it's how you play that hand. And so yeah. um, I played that, you know, hey, a Super Bowl to you. Yeah. <laughs> I get a six round pick. Yeah. I go I go in there, I take advantage of the opportunity, you know, on top of the fact that I started in um on the fourth string. You know, I was not even listed as a starter or anybody in the rotation. I think they wanted to practice squad me anyways, but yeah. um I ended up starting I ended up starting my first game, you know. So uh it was it taught me a lot about myself, about how to climb up and how to handle adversity and um a lot of stuff that in tool that I use today. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I always say that yeah, football teaches you a lot of things of, of about life, not just mm-hmm. not just sports. That uh, yeah, you get to you gotta yeah. persevere and you got to overcome obstacles and yeah, you got to keep going and, and not give up on things and and uh, you know set high goals for yourself and and, and work hard because if you do those things, uh, things will work out for you, which uh, which is obviously did for you uh, with the Giants. So yeah, talk about uh, that first year and and making it to the Super Bowl and and. Uh, no, you guys didn't have the, the greatest record during the season, but uh, you ended to ended the season well, obviously, and put things together and 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 won the won the uh, Super Bowl against the the New England Patriots, the only team that seems to to know how to beat them. So, <laughs> talk about the uh, your uh, Super Bowl experience that year. My Super Bowl experience, man, was really amazing, man. It really was. Um, you know, me being able to, you know, number one. Uh, had my family there was amazing and my close friends. Um, me being able to just, I was, uh, on the kickoff return team. Yeah. Um, at the start of the game. So, you know, I was in that very first play of the game and all the stuff that I wanted to see, like I always watched the Super Bowl growing up as a kid. And then you're like, man, I wonder what those lights, are those lights really real? You know, yeah. do you, do you can't really hear all those lights as the ball being kicked. And I really, truly believe that in the Super Bowl, and I think every player that plays in it yeah. feels the same way, as the ball, um, this is only on the first kickoff, yeah. but as the ball is going through the air, it's a little bit, like, uh, surreal, and you kind of, it, it kind of slows up a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
and you just can, you know, you're trying to, you know, get your spot and, you know, do your job, but you can hear like all the all cameras the and yeah. there's like, there's no music, right? There's just boom and there's no music. Like there's just click, 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 click. Oh, wow. And, and, and you're, and, and, and yeah, dude, right. And, and you're off, you know, and you're off and, um, I ended up blocking, you know, two guys at one time, and I, I just, I had a blast, you know. I, I can honestly say that, you know, playing in the Super Bowl, and and that's why, you know, it's so addicting, you know, to a guy like Tom Brady who's been a lot because that feeling is just so amazing, you know, yeah. and it truly is addicting. Like you just like you're like man, like I want to, I again. want this again, I want this. right, and you don't want that feeling to ever stop either, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so yeah, man, it it really did. Uh, it changed my life and for the better. And it was just so surreal moment um, to be out there and obviously um, proposing to my now wife. Uh, you know, we've been together now for nine years now. So um, you know, it's it was definitely meant to be and everything. So yeah, being able to do that and share that moment with her was you know pretty awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So we got to talk about that proposal. So. Uh, for yeah, for those that know that you proposed to your wife after the game with all the confetti and everything on coming down the field, and it's like the perfect atmosphere to to do something like that. So talk about your your plans and and uh, uh, going into into that. Obviously, you had the your plans for the game and all the film study and all that. But yeah, you also had in your downtime were preparing for your proposal and getting all that together. So talk about how how that all went down. So going into the game. Um... You know, initially I was going to propose to, you know, a lot of people asked me if we would have won or lost, like what would happen. Like I was still going to propose to my wife, win, lose, or draw. Lose. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to propose win or lose no matter what. But I was initially going to propose on our vacation shortly after the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, and she somehow figured it out. And I wanted to surprise her. So. I just said that, hey, if we, you know, we win, I'm going to do it on the field. Yeah. Um, but if we lost, I would have not done it on the field. I still would have done it. I just would have not done it on not the field. field. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I, I, it was amazing. And I gave it, <laughs> I gave it to, I gave my ring to a guy on the practice roster who wasn't dressed. So I knew he would, you know, hold on to yeah, it. Yeah. What I didn't know. What I didn't know was that he also was going to propose to his girlfriend. What? No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, uh, it was that was it was pretty funny. Oh, man. I'm chasing him. He's chasing his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so we had another game uh, after the game. Was, it, it was a game <laughs> after the game, and not to mention, man. I mean, you know, with dollar confetti, and I mean, there's hundreds of people that just rushed the field. Yeah, it's so, hard to find. Uh, it, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, I couldn't find it. I, I, I was like losing my mind. I finally found him and I found my mom and I found my wife or my fiance at the at time, my girlfriend at the yeah. time. And yeah. So I'm just like, oh man, like this is just getting worse. Um, Hopefully so, you found but anyhow, you yeah. Found I did. Okay, thank good. God. Yeah, it all yeah. worked out. It all worked out. But, uh, but yeah, and that's, so that's how that happened, man. And, um, I initially didn't do it to like be on like, YouTube or anything like that I was not really big into social media at the time. Trust me, yeah, yeah. a lot of people wanted me to, and I oh, really? I was very um, hard no on social media for a while. But um, anyhow, yeah, like they uh, they just found us and started asking us questions and everything like that. Though, but yeah, we were not um, planning on being on any type of social media. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Oh no, you're all you're looking and, and uh, it's all about the feeling of um, being the feeling the love with your uh, then uh, fiance and just uh, being in the moment and right. yeah, everything else was just uh, was just gravy, I, I guess, for you guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. All right, so, so let's uh, talk about now your time in the in the CFL. You went from the uh, uh, the Giants and then end up uh, coming up here and playing in the Canadian Football League with the uh, Argos and, and Rough Riders. Right. So uh, talk about your time up here, up here in Canada and the, the differences you, you you found between the two leagues. Um, man, I will say that the game is faster. You know what I mean? Man, it's a lot faster uh, gameplay than it is in the C and in the NFL yeah. in the sense that, um, you know, with the three downs, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, everything goes quick. He's the game, you know what I mean? It goes by fast. And when the offense goes three and out and you just 
got done doing a six a six play drive on defense. Yeah, you just to be right there. back up on punt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so because my first ever game went just like this. This is a very true story. It was against the Hamilton Tiger Cats um, at the uh, at Hamilton. It's nine degrees. It was the rivalry game. Yeah, um, when I was with Toronto, and I started on. I was on kickoff. I ran down on kickoff. Yeah. Then I went to defense. Yeah. I did four or five plays on defense, six plays on defense before, you know, stopping the drive. In punt return? Uh, did, yeah, I was on punt return, so I went to punt return. After doing punt return, um, you know, trying to get a return, the offense went three and out, oh, and man. I was back on punt. <laughs> And that was my first ever drive, yeah. oh, my first wow. ever series in the Canadian Football League, and I was and I <laughs> contemplated death <laughs> point in time. Um, it was that I mean, but it was it was rough, man. But I will tell you, man, it was a lot. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I miss I miss both games. I do every anytime I see you don't want. I'm like, man, I miss it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I still know a lot. I still know a good handful of the guys. I mean, granted, we're all a lot older now. They're the older vets of people questioning are they <laughs> on the way out or not. Like those yeah. are the guys that I that I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But are, you know, I'm happy for you. Starting to see some really good contracts and everything um, for a lot of guys that I play with, and you know, I'm happy for those guys. So, um, but but anyhow, yeah, man, it is uh, the CFL. Man, I, I love it. Um, you know, you got the waggle, you know, the forward motion. That's obviously a lot different. Extra play on the field. The field's wider and longer. Yeah. Um, atmosphere is totally different. Atmosphere is way different, you know, in the NFL or CFL. Not bad or good, just different. Just different yeah. Um, and, yeah, just different. You know, everybody, you know, NFL has their little things and the CFL has their things and the, the cultures, you know what I mean, are play a part as well too. Yeah. Um, and I love the Canadian culture. I absolutely love it. I promise you. Uh, <laughs> my, my wife always was like, you really like that. Like I love being in, I do. I love being in Canada. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it's just, I've always had great times and, you know, don't get me wrong. There's always some, you know, everybody's bad days, but the majority of my memory has always been great. Been good, yeah. Um, being in Canada. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah, man, it's, uh, like being being in CFL, I loved it. I know I really did. I loved it, and like I said, the the camaraderie between the players and the coaches and everybody was pretty solid. Like you don't see that a whole lot in football or in professional sports at all. But um, I really think like the CFL is so close knit, you know, because I I don't think any other sport that I know of where like after a game, a rivalry game, half half of each team is out, you know what I mean, at the keg or Catchers Club or, you know what I yeah, mean, like having the, yeah. the time and saying out and talking. So, um, you know, I, I was very shell shocked to see that. You know, I thought it was all like beef and, you know, guys are shaking hands and hugging each other. Oh, yeah. I'm like, dude, we just got done trying to <laughs> each other hit the part. And now, you know, we're getting ready to, you know, split a bill, you know, yeah, but, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I love that though. And that, you know, that really made football more than just a sport to me and made it, you know, something that this is a, you know, a fellowship and a brotherhood, Family. um, of guys. Yeah. You know, that want to help each other out, but at the same time, some very, very, um, good competitive, uh, play at the same time. So yeah. uh, I, I really, um, enjoyed my time in the CFL. I really did. Yeah, CFL is yeah, it's great for that. Great camaraderie between players and the uh, and uh, yeah, we're very tight knit and like you said, we do. Uh, yeah. We are very competitive and we are you know, we want to uh, take each other's heads off on the field, but uh, off the field we're we're all together and and trying to to help yeah. each other out and uh, yeah, one big happy family type of thing. So it's uh, definitely a great atmosphere yeah. here in CFL for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um. Yeah, you end up uh, your career with Saskatchewan, so you went from uh, Green to Michigan State to the Green of the uh, of the Rough Riders. So you talk about your right. last uh, last little bit of time in the CFL. How was it with the 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 Rowdy Rider fans and the and the the Canada Wide Rider fans? What was it like being a, a part of the the Rider Nation? Yeah, man, my time in the SAS man was uh, was pretty cool. You know, I was one of the at the time one of the marquee players. So um, you know, my Face and stuff was get started getting plastered and 
all that good thing. So I, um, I enjoy my time, you know, in Sash, you know, I, I really hate that we cannot, you know, put it together and have a good productive season. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed my time in Sash. I thought that, um, the players, um, were really cool to get to know them. There's a lot of different walks of life there. Um, I will say I'm not a country guy. I feel like there's a lot of country in <laughs> Sash. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not exactly me, but. But yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of country in, in SAS and, um, but yeah, I liked it. I, mean, I liked that the, like the, the people are all about Saskatchewan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? They're all about uh, the riders. <laughs> they're all about the riders. You know what I mean? Everything is riders, 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 riders. And that's why I like, I'm like, okay, this is the best town. Um, I just want a little bit more to the city. You know yeah, yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know, add a little bit, you know, a little bit more, but. Uh, but other than that, though, yeah, I I really think that um, having a city like that for a player, that's what you want. You know, you want everybody to come watch your games and get to see your hard work paying off uh, for them, you know, to represent their city. You know, that's one thing I will say. I always take a lot of pride in playing the CFL um, is that you get to play for that that whole, you know, that, that town, that, that area. And, yeah the families and people and the diehards and the season ticket holders and, you know, all those, you know, the kids, the youth, you know, all the people in that area, you know, you get to play for them and, and, and make them proud and a smile on their face and bragging rights. Exactly. <laughs> um, when, you know, I, I hear about, you know, when I'm signing autographs. So, uh, you know, I, I respect that, you know, and I think that's why you, you come to come to game. That's why I started going to football games as a kid. Uh, because you get to see that, you know, so I've always taken that to heart when I got to play represent, um, when I was in, same thing in Ottawa, I also played in Ottawa too, um, oh, okay. and for, for just a, a half a year, no worries, but I played in Ottawa too, and same thing, you know, yeah. it's the nation's capital, and I, and I love that city as well too, I really, really love Ottawa. Um, but yeah, you know, getting to play for those, East Town, I mean, not even play for East Town, but East Town that I played for, uh, was really, really awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so let's uh, let's not talk about uh, transitioning out of football and you know, near the end of your career. I'm not sure if you kind of thought about what you wanted to do or what uh, your plans were for uh, life after football. But uh, talk about uh, your transition and, and going into what you're what you're doing now in in life. Uh, yeah. So now you know I um, I. I'm the vice president of Game Protective Gear. Uh, what we did was we took a mouth guard, uh, put two sensors in it, and then based on the G-force, we can tell whether or not uh, a kid needs to be checked uh, for a concussion or not. So uh, that is something that, you know, we did, um, you know, because we want safety. You know, it's all about safety. Uh, it's all about, you know, helping um the youth out as well too yeah um, and that's what we wanted we wanted a product that we you know could share with our kids someday you know i have a four four-year-old a three-year-old and and one on the way so well, well, that's something that you know thank you boss thank you thank you yeah. and so that's something that we wanted you know for our kids and all the my my CEO was a hockey guy. He has two kids, and his son plays uh, plays hockey. Okay. Uh, my our pre our president uh, played for the National Predators for eleven years, oh, nice. and you know he has kids in, it, in their sports. And then my son, you know, he, he he's in, he wants to start doing football. He's already in karate. Yeah. So you know it's uh, you know every all of us you know in the the leadership roles in the company. You know, we did this stuff not because of, you know, yeah, it's a great idea. It can make some money. But at the same time, this could really help and save lives, you yeah. know. And yeah. and that's what the focus is. And and keep contact sports around. You know, I, I think contact sports really do help build discipline. You know, I think oh, it's yeah. something about when you got to get, you know, hit and get back up again. I think that that builds character, I think, in your, in, in your mind because – you get you got knocked out like it happened to me, but I can tell you I can tell you a lot more that I got stronger for getting up and not laying down. Yeah, exactly. and and that to me is what football is about is is how to get stronger getting up and, and not have a defeated mindset. Oh, I'm going to stay here just because 
something go my way. Yeah. You know, and because and if everybody, if that happened to everybody, nothing, the world that, that we see today would, would not really exist. If we get, <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying? If we gave up on the first time. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that's what, you know what I mean? That's what, you know, football teaches you that, hey, you're not going to be the biggest and the strongest, but you can work work hard and, and be that guy that everybody respects and has the greatest discipline, you know, those controllables is what it's about, you know, athleticism and talent. I mean, those are gifts from God to me. That's my personal opinion, but yeah. working hard, discipline, being on time, showing up, being a teammate, being accountable, um, starting to show leadership from somebody who's never been a leader before um, in the right fashion. Those to me are the skills and concepts and things that, you know, football teaches. And I think that if people understood that, you know, you would want to get around that more. But at the same time, I totally agree. I, I'm not going to put my son or daughter in harm's way either in contact sports and put them out there with something that's not in, in something that's not safe. That's not safe yeah. And so that's why, you know, our product, you know, we're trying to help with that and put parents' minds at ease. So that way we have some type of understanding of what's happened to our players. Yeah, that's um, right. So, yeah, that's what, uh, that's what we're, you know, we're focusing on and, um, and things like that. And then I do, I do speaking. You know, I, I share my messages and like me going from inner city and talking to kids. I do speaking as well, too. Okay. Um, I also, I do speaking agility training. Um, and I run seven V seven tournaments, um, all across the nation. Oh, nice. Okay. And do you do yeah. that, uh, through a organization or is it, uh, like your personal? Yeah. So my tournaments, yeah, my tournaments are through legacy football, um, based here in Brighton, Michigan. And then, uh, are also run uh, flag football leagues as well, um, with Under Armour Under the Lights. Okay. Um, that's based here and that's based in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Uh, my partner, um, Jesse Sior and I, we, we've been doing this for a little bit now. So, um, but yeah, we, uh, that, that's pretty much it, man. You know, I'm staying busy and, uh, also, yeah, me and my wife also do Rodan and Fields, Scan Caroline as well, too. So, um, and, and, you know, we've, We've been a part of that for a while now, going on four years as well, too. So, yeah, we're um, we're pretty busy, man. We're very, very busy. But, you know, I think that we make time for the things that matter most, man. Exactly, so. yeah. If it matters enough, you'll make time for it, for sure. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, that's great. So, Greg, so, yeah, I, like, I usually uh, finish off with uh, what I call the top of the mountain moment. So, kind of looking back on your, your football journey, your football career, and all that you've gone through, and the ups and downs, and the, the highs and lows, and the... The thrills and the, the the defeats and the things that uh, you've gone through is there a favorite story a favorite memory is there a, a lesson learned this uh, some tips for younger players how do you how, how would you like to, to end things off here man i would just say that um a quote that always stuck with me um and this goes like you talked about before a little earlier before like a life thing is that um, we were, we were first off, whether this was actually in New York where I found it, I heard this quote from Tom Coughlin, and it's always stuck with me. I actually went on my wall, um, in, in our house one day. Yeah. Um, is that if it does not come from within or from you, where will it come from? And it always stuck with me because I was a younger guy. Um, like I said, I was a rookie starting middle linebacker. Meanwhile, I have like eight all pro players that have been in the NFL for, you know, seven years and playing football when I was in diapers, you know what I mean? All around me. And I'm trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to lead these guys. Yeah. And they're looking at me and I'm looking at them. Right. And that's not, I mean, yeah, leadership, you, 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 you know, you look out for those that, that you're leading, but you have to, you know, be able to have your own vision at the same time too. And I didn't have that. I was always looking at somebody else's. And, and when, after I read that quote and started believing in myself a little bit more, not because of that quote, because I started putting the time in. Yeah. Um, so therefore it could come from within. And I think that's what I would like to tell all the young players and people out there that it has to come from within, you know, looking for something external to change the internal it doesn't always work. Yeah. I think it has to start from internal and then grow to be something external. And that's when people can start to see your light and, and who you are as a person and what you're capable of. And I think that's something that, you know, everybody can use, not just about football, basketball, any sport, kind of, you know, whatever you're into. Um, but it has to start from within. I think um, that would be my, when I learned that, that was my, you know, top of the mountain moment is that 
I knew that I can control whatever I can control. Yeah. And I don't have to look to somebody else or something else um, to help me control what's inside of me. So um, not to get too sappy or, you know, <laughs> too, too cliche, it, yeah. um, but I truly, I, tr- I really, really do believe that. I really do. I start inside. I start inside. That's great. All right, Greg. So I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. It's been a, a pleasure and a, a great interview. And uh, I wish you all the best with the, with the company, the, the Vane Protective Gear. So, again, if uh, you guys want to check that thank out. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys want to check that out, uh, go to VaneMouthGuards.com. MouthGuards.com, yep. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, and all the information is there. Is it available um, uh, everywhere pretty much, or it, can you order it online? Or yeah, also? I mean, hey, if – if you got Amazon, if you get Amazon, you can get it's it. Okay, exactly. <laughs> it's on Amazon go. and it's on uh, Walmart, Walmart online as well too. Okay, cool. I'll put links in the in the show notes so that people can can click on there to get them if they want. All right. Yes. Okay. Cool. Click buy now. Buy now, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg. Appreciate your time and uh, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you for listening to After the Gridiron. If you're a fan of the show, please make sure you subscribe to the show and also leave a rating and review. By doing that, you also help spread the word about the podcast and assist others in finding the show so more people can enjoy this great content. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the links to those being found on the website. Your support is very much appreciated. Also, please visit the resources page on the website for links to our sponsors and affiliates. Your support helps to keep the show running. So go to www.atgridiron.com slash resources to check them out. Thanks again for listening. And I'll see you when we kick off our next episode.